Hello, um, today I'm going to give you a little bit of a briefing on uh, doing exam questions. Uh, this is a PowerPoint originally done by a very good geology teacher, Ian Kenyon, and um, hopefully it will help you avoid disasters in certain exams. So one of the reasons, well several reasons, uh, that you can think of for poor performance in examinations, whether you're uh, retaking your AS or about to do your AS or that's sort your of way to, is really um, being prepared. If you haven't um, had good organisation during the course, then you're going to really find it difficult to actually revise. Um, and this also is the amount of effort you've put in during the course. Have you actually done the homework, done the past questions that have been set? Anything like that is going to be reason for you not performing as well as you could do in the exams. Another reason might be that you don't really know what's in the specification. Our textbook, which we use as an OECR textbook, is very good, but it isn't what's necessarily in WJUC or EDUCAS specification, so you need to know that too. Have you looked at past papers? Mark schemes, examiner's reports. If you're doing A2, then of course that makes it a lot easier for you. But even for AS, uh, with the new specification, you can prepare yourself for this. What's your revision? How is it going? How are you doing it? Um, what sort of strategy have you got? Uh, I think with our recent mock exams, we've seen that some of you haven't actually got an appropriate strategy for revision. Maybe it worked for you in GCSE. Now you've got to modify it for doing AS and A2. And lastly, we'll look a little bit about poor examination technique because there are ways to improve even on the day that in the examination hall. So um, I've been through this before. We've talked about the idea of a coprolite file. Um, you do not need one. You must get yourself organised. Every single piece of um, work that you do within class, any handouts that you're given, Anything like that, put the date on it, put it somewhere in the folder in the right order so that you know where everything is. Don't put it in the bottom of your bag, you'll never see it again. File away your notes, you know, as much as you can under topic headings. I always give you these, I always tell you the date, do it on a weekly basis. Only carry the last, your class notes for the last two weeks, really. Everything else should be somewhere in a beautiful organised system at home. And the specification, I've talked about this before. Um, I will obviously give you uh, bits from the specification, but it is your best friend. Um, and the, once you start to look at exam questions, you'll see that a lot of the wording on the exam questions have come straight directly from the specification. And uh, there's a thing called the knowledge and understanding section of the specification, which I'll just show you here. Um, this is uh, the AS specification for the new um, A level, and uh, the knowledge and understanding is this bit here. This really is your learning objectives for what you need to know. So this was the first topic that we did this year. If you highlight that topic and put in uh, information of what you've actually done, class notes, that sort of thing, and where it cross references, it will help you revise it. And it's a useful check as well if you've missed any lessons because you'll know what you need to actually catch up either from the textbook or from asking me for information. Okay, you should make use of available resources. There are examination questions that are on uh, the internet. Um, so we're doing the uh, WJC or um, EDUCAS exam board. Um, if you type in either WJC past papers or EDUCAS past papers, you will come to this. And if you click on uh, this bit here where it says past papers and mark schemes, you'll see that they have from the old specification a range of past papers here. So from different summer um, uh, examinations, these under the English medium, you don't click on the Welsh ones, we don't want that. And you can have a look and uh, see what sort of questions have been asked. Even if you're doing the new specification, they, a lot of the exam questions will not change. So it's a good thing uh, to do there. They're free to um, download. They're PDF files. So you need to obviously uh, download um, Adobe as well. They also have the mark schemes for these examination um, papers too. 
So again, download these. What you can do with that is you can um, see where and why marks were awarded for particular questions. And you can also see, you know, if it's a one marker, we're going to be looking for one word. Uh, and that's what we will actually be going to achieve on there. Um, the third thing is also these things called examiner reports. So let me just show you where they are. So if I go back to the website. Uh, so the mark schemes, by the way, were here next to the past papers. Uh, but if you go back to this thing, you have past papers and mark schemes. We also have related documents. And if you click on to that, you'll see the specification. This is the old specification for people doing A2 this year. Um, but um, there is specification, obviously, for the 2017 uh, new uh, A-level as well. But here we have some examiner reports from previous exams. Uh, summer 2015, for example, here. Um, summer 2017, so the one that was taken last year. And why should you be interested in those? Well, you maybe don't want to read absolutely everything here in a teacher, but they do, especially for the long essay questions, give you an overview of how individual questions performed, and they give you an idea of grade boundaries as well. So that might be a useful thing to do um, as you get nearer to exam time. So let's look at some common weaknesses in um, exam questions. Uh, and these are um, this, these are common amongst all candidates. Um, confusing command words. We've had these on the board, we have them around the classroom, but people do model up, describe, explain, compare or contrast. What do you mean by assess? What do you mean by outline, account, suggest, evaluate? evaluate. You do need to make sure that you know these at the future. Also, there are key geological and geographical vocab that we use, and if you middle these up again, you're going to uh, struggle with doing the exams. So, with volcanoes, modelling up effusive and explosive, modelling up uh, what a pyrocrastic flow is in the lahar, um, earthquakes, magnitude versus intensity, with um, um, magma type, basaltic and andesitic, if you're looking at plate tectonics, structure of the earth. If you're um, talking about um, uh, impacts, uh, 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 you might be talking about environmental, geological, and human factors, and uh, obviously the geography, uh, demographic, economic, and social impacts. So, if looking at things like mining and whatever. So, you do need to make sure that you understand these if they're in the question of and the regional global impact. Another a uh, very common uh, weakness, in fact one in seven candidates make this mistake, is failing to see questions that require something to be marked on a map or a graph or a diagram. These questions are so common and they are so commonly missed by people. The top tip I think here, which Ian has put in, is to look down the right hand side of the page where the mark allocation is given. Um, here you see that there's one here, this question here, but there's no white space underneath it. And what candidates often do when they rush into papers is they go straight for the ones where there are lines because they know that they need to write an answer and they miss this one above them. But they're often easy marks, maybe only one or two answers, uh, um, marks available on these answers, but you know, they could be the difference between an A and a B, so make sure that you don't miss them. Uh, there's the map that it was asking you to draw. Um, the movement of the ocean plate in this area. So that's what you need to do for that particular one. Here's another one. Uh, so it's right at the top here, easy to miss, but it's asking you to mark on figure two uh, the focus of an earthquake on this particular uh, uh, diagram here. Again, an easy thing uh, to miss. Right, time plans for examinations. Um, it's very easy to spend a lot of time on particular questions and then when you get to a longer question you leave it at the end and I've seen this as an examiner it's terrible I, I feel so sorry for the candidate they've written sorry I've run out of time don't let that be you this is a time plan for an old GL3 paper which included an essay in it the paper length was one hour 15 minutes uh, it had two structured questions which were worth 12 marks each so 12 minutes and it had one essay that you could choose from a choice of three. So to do that essay, which was uh, worth 25 marks, you would need a plan time of five minutes, a writing time of around 40 minutes, and then a checking back over it 
of around about six minutes to make sure that you would done it correctly. So have some sort of plan there. Oh, this one's a good, a good one, of course. Um, do check your answers. You don't want to have a howler. It might be funny, but um, it might also lose you a mark, which might lose you a grade. So avoid careless mistakes. My goodness me. Um, balsamic lava flows. How interesting. Uh, there we go. But, you know, it, they are funny, but you don't want it to happen to you. This is a really interesting thing as well. The examiner puts things in bold type because they're an important focus of the question. They want you to look at figure one and figure two um, here. They want you to describe um, the uh, Pozzoli uh, region uh, at risk of uh, volcanic eruption between 1970 and 1985. So use those in, as information to actually answer the question if they're highlighted. Now this is a really good um, example of, a, of, a, of something that I know candidates do and I know people in, in this classroom do. They look at a, a, a question and I know the answer. Uh, and I write loads and this is one mark. So what do you think the examiner was wanting? State the plate boundary in figure 1A. State. Name it. We want you to name it. It's a destructive plate boundary. Look what they got from this candidate. Oh my goodness. Well, Mark, correct, but my goodness, they've talked about what the Pacific plate is, the Mariana Trench, oh, explosive eruptions, blah, blah, blah. They've entered Waffle Town, and there's no marks for that. Here's another one, um, one mark, and then the type of magma um, for uh, the explosive eruption of Krakatoa. They wanted Andesitic. This is what they got. Oh, my goodness, it's everything you ever needed to know about Krakatoa. But is it worth one mark? Well, yes, but it's also a waste of this candidate's time, and that's not what we want to see. So, I'm going to leave you there. We'll um, look at essay weaknesses in the next uh, podcast. So, hopefully, uh, you've enjoyed this webinar and uh, will um, help you uh, with your revision and planning essay, um, exams. Thank you. Bye bye.